What is going on, Champion Squad? It is your boy Soldy. Welcome, faces, back to another Apex Legends video. Today, I'll be showing you how to play smarter with three quick tips. Thank you for joining me, and let's get into the video. Do you feel like your skill level plateaued even after improving your accuracy and or movement? Well, your in-game decisions is the next step towards finding more success. So today I'll be going over some solid tips to help you play smarter, so be sure to stick around. If you're new here, subscribe, join the champion squad here, find some of the best Apex tips and tricks to make you an even better player. Now let's get into some valid tips to help you improve faster. So you want to make smarter plays in Apex Legends, but you feel like your skill level is stuck. Well, first and foremost, it's always important to understand what you did wrong whenever you get killed during a gunfight. Whether you didn't heal when you needed to or just taking on highly predictable angles. So I'll be going over tips such as limiting angles, juking initial shots, and using predictable routes. As per usual, timestamps will be down in the description below. With that being said, let's get into the first tip I want to cover, which is limiting gunfight angles. Whenever I'm playing Apex, I tend to abuse as much cover if possible. Using cover is the best way to make the gunfight go in your favor since you can bait shots and peek when you feel the moment is right. On top of all that, the most important aspect of cover is limiting the angles the enemy player has on you. If you find yourself in an open field, you can easily get beamed down from any angle, which makes it extremely hard for you to take down enemies. So as you navigate around the map, you always want to know beforehand as to what you can use as cover if enemies try to make the play on you. Now when fighting more than one enemy at once, making sure to allow only one of those players to have an open shot on you is crucial. This forces the enemies to have a one-on-one -on -one gunfight, which is a much safer exchange as opposed to a whole team firing at you at once. So always remember to position yourself where you have one gunfight angle that enemies can take on you. This will limit the amount of DPS coming at you at once, and you can focus on relieving pressure one player at a time. It's also important to note that cracking shields on an opposing player will spare you time to make your next move. Whether you want to change your angle to peek another enemy, fall back to heal, or full send if the timing is right. So be sure to play your angles and force the enemies to make the mistakes on you. Now let's take a look at a quick example of how I was abusing cover and playing limited angles. All right, so looking at this example, this was an early drop right off the rip of the game. So people have basic shields, but we don't have any healables, any consumables. I ended up picking a longbow and an EVA off the ground. Right off the bat, notice a revenant pushing under the house. This is where I start to get aggressive and see if I can take him out with a longbow and or EVA. Got some nice shots on him there. He's cracked with a blue shield. There he goes. So now we have a 2v1 gunfight. The race in the distance. Revenant gets slapped with the first bullet. Climb up top. There's my angle. That top angle to finish off the Revenant. And now the Wraith is making a bad play. And I'm tagging some easy shots on her because she's not abusing her cover. She's widening the open, exposing her entire body. And I'm able to land these nice shots playing any angle I want with that rock, really. I can peek the left side when I want to, I can climb on top of it when I want to, and I can also peek the right side when I want to. So while she's making the mistake exposing herself to me, I can play my angles. And basically while doing so, you want to be as unpredictable as possible, so you can peek the same angle over and over again, but I like to mix it up just to be unpredictable. Alright ladies and gentlemen, now let's get into the second tip towards playing smarter, which is juking initial shots. During hectic gunfights where sometimes you might not be prepared to pre-aim and have the first shots on an enemy, the best option is to use your movement and try and juke initial shots the enemy tries to land on you. This ultimately limits the enemy to be able to one mag you or basically limit the amount of damage they can deal. On top of all that, this wastes a good portion of their magazine on missing shots. Then you have the upper hand on them afterwards since you can catch them reloading or trying to weapon swap on you. However, it is crucial to note that your aim in these specific situations needs to be on point. Although the enemy might not knock you while juking, they will get some sort of damage off. Then it's up to you to capitalize and deal more damage than they've done. Now you can do a handful of movement techniques during the initial juking, such as crowd strafing, jump sliding, or running in a different direction, then immediately turning back and start frying. Basically, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Just remember to use this technique only when you get caught off guard and don't have the first shots on the enemy. Instead of trying to fight back on a losing battle, using movement can save you in more times than you think. Then it's up to your aim to finish the fight strong. 
Using this tip is also a mental game with the enemy. If an enemy doesn't see you firing back at them immediately, then they will feel more comfortable to expose themselves off of cover. Then when you decide to snap on them, you will have an easier angle on the gunfight. Now let's take a look at another quick example of how juking initial shots can turn the gunfight in your favor. All right, guys, looking at this next quick example I have. Now, my teammate goes down. We are playing duos, so I have to take on a 1v2 gunfight. Now, they're already in their houses. They have their setup. They have their positioning, everything. I'm just trying to tag shots at a distance, see what I can do. Maybe get an easy knock if possible, um, but you're going to notice I can't quite manage to get one. So what's going to happen is if you don't end up knocking them at a distance, they're going to start playing aggressive on you. They're going to start trying to play in your face, trying to get different angles on you. And that's when you really have to come clutch. So what I like to do is try to focus one player immediately. Try to find where they're at. See if you can get them really weak. And if you can crack them, that's going to limit and spare you some time while they heal to make the next play. So I'm having some back and forth banter with this Pathfinder right hand side. Can't manage to do anything really impressive on him. Now, luckily, I have a gold shield and a bat. So I crank a bat and I notice immediately the Octane is making the push right on top of me. Now, in the back of my head, I know he's going to push me and start frying me immediately. So as soon as I crank this bat, I act like I start trying to run away, hit him with a nice knee slide and get the better of the exchange. Again, juking those initial shots and then turning back to fight it immediately. Plus, the poor kid was lagging. Then the Pathfinder comes in that quick little straight to the right and crouch, making that Pathfinder miss a load of shots while I was trying to finish my reload is what ended up saving me. So let's throw this second exchange on the Pathfinder back in slow motion real quick, just so you can see how it goes down because it happens within a split second. So while reloading the R301, that ghost time, I did a left to right strafe crouch, which made him miss a load of shots probably about a quarter of his magazine definitely not half though but juking those initial shots and snapping right back at him last second is crucial to win more gunfights especially when they have the first shot on you right after i killed pathfinder my teammates band had about 10 seconds left and i ended up picking it up at with one second to go it's one of the best feelings ever i actually put this on twitter mini clip of it and i did a slight edit on it uh, so if you guys haven't followed me on twitter be sure to do so link is going to be down in the description below all right, Legends, now let's get into the third and final tip on playing smarter, which is taking unpredictable routes. The biggest mistake I see players making is pushing obvious spots, where most times you'll get pre-aimed for being so predictable. Now, obviously, where time is of the essence, during some situations where you need to push the most basic way to get a place, then it's fine. But if you have spare time, using unpredictable routes to approach an enemy team is the best way to catch them off guard for an easy first knock. And how I always say, getting that first knock is crucial no matter in pubs or in rank to finish the rest of the squad. So using skeevy routes to enter a building can come clutch most of the time. Now in terms of learning how to make unpredictable plays, it all comes with experience and watching other players gameplay on how they approach fights. Doing this, you can take bits and pieces of spots you can remember and apply to your gameplay. Once you find a unique way to enter a building and find some success while doing so, you will immediately remember to use that approach for future gunfights. It's all about building your arsenal of strategies on how to approach a gunfight in certain areas. So with time, you'll notice yourself becoming more unpredictable and catching players off guard with a big opening exchange and possibly getting a quick and easy knock. So now let's take a look at our last example on how being unpredictable can result in massive success. All right, ladies and gentlemen, finally looking at the last example for today, playing unpredictable and taking unpredictable routes. Now, of course, everyone's going to get some decent aim up close. They're going to have some basic game sense. It's your job to play as unpredictable as possible, especially when the opening of the gunfight is so crucial. So whenever you can take in a building, just like I did right here, knee slide off that, climb up the ledge, just taking notes on small stuff that players do. Ended up catching them off guard because they probably thought I was going to take the staircase. They didn't really know I was going to climb the balcony. Easy knock in the Revenant. Since I had a blue shield, figured I could get a quick purple swap on him. And then I also heard someone reloading underneath me. So I was just trying to get ready as soon as possible. And as soon as I was reloaded, fully healed, We'll send the kid on the bottom. He's probably not going to expect it. Obviously, he does now because the knockdown teammate saw me. And he ended up punching air. And I finish him off. I love when that happens. <laughs> I do that too. I hate punching air. But again, looking back at that clip. Knee sliding off of the ledge where the banners are. So knee slide jump. Catch the wall. Hold up on your analog stick. And climb all the way up. Now, that's just one spot. There, again, there's going to be a multiple spots where you can climb up and enter buildings in unique ways. 
you got to keep track of when you're watching other people do it. Now, it's going to be hard to keep track of everything. You know, that's not going to be possible. But if you're taking little bits and pieces of people's gameplay and applying it to your own style, and if you find success while doing so, you're going to remember that. And then you're going to know for the future gameplays. Be sure to take all the tips in this video into consideration to find yourself playing smarter and making better plays to improve faster. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to show some love to the like button. It's always appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Join the champion squad. We're on the road to 60,000 subscribers. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, this has been your boy Solomon D. I'm signing off. Peace.